Hey there and welcome, my name is Carlos Berlitz and let's start talking about what has been going on in the indie tabletop RPG scene. And as always, I'm not being gladly sponsored by anyone mentioned here unless explicitly said or mentioned otherwise. And some of the below links might be some affiliate links, uh, so they benefit me without costing you anything extra. But on it all, all the links will be in the description with the appropriate timestamps so that you can jump to the time of your chosen. And first, we go around with a release coming from RPG C, the Southeast Asian community. Inkit is a game about blood sucking bounty hunters released by Mitsi Tukiero, which I hope that I'm pronouncing correctly. And it is a gemless game for two to five players and very rules light and roleplay heavy. Another point that might motivate you is that it uses a D12 which does usually not receive the love it deserves, and I particularly love the D12, and I wish more games made use of it. And it was also submitted as part of the BIPOC Vampire Jam that we mentioned in some previous episode. Another gem that's released is Lay on Hands by Alfred Valley. It is a solo tabletop RPG in which you are an amazingly talented healer roaming through a post-apocalyptic wasteland which seems like a place that an amazingly talented healer is needed most. And the creator describes it as Iron Sword meets Stryka and Fallout. It is at least intriguing in how they make it together. And also, solo games are always welcome, even more that we need to keep some distance from people, socially distance and all of that. It is a 36 pages book and you play without dice, so it makes it easier. And also I wanted to highlight the great idea that this project brings for the community copies of it, where ratings and reviews as well as play reports contribute for community copies and also the regular one that we usually use that is buying games. It will also have an SRD that is just being released perhaps today, perhaps next week, so that you can perhaps refer to it or even create games based on this SRD. And continuing on GMless, we have Paris Gondum by Callum from the Holister podcast, and it has a new version that is out just this week. It is now fully illustrated with the full rules, and the game is a storytelling game for three to six players designed to be played without preparation. So you just come to the table and play it. And it focuses on playing around encumbrance that is so common in some old dungeon crawler and even some current dungeon crawlers as well. And some video games also use this idea of encumbrance. And if the characters get to the attach it to their eat items, who knows? Like if they just get too attached to it, perhaps something will not end right. Okay? And it also has a transcript in it to help people to get a solid grasp of the game. A very interesting thing and a very good idea to make it easier for people and to play it in an easier way to what the rules are describing. And you have also some playing aids like cards and the like that are also provided with the game. Very interesting to see the project finally out with the creator's vision because they had a previous version that is was very streamlined, but now it is complete. And also releases this time is from RPG Latam, the Latin American tabletop RPG scene. We have Anonimato. It is focused on escape rooms and tricky games. For the PCs to escape this hierarchical game, they need to obtain points. How they get those points? They are acquired by completing escape rooms, participating in secondary games, or betraying another player. Interesting to say the least, actually. And uh, another release, a little bit less uh, step in the back, Beloved, is another title coming from RPG C. This solo game, using the Lost and Found SRD, was released by Urania Games, and it is a game where you play a beloved childhood toy that is acting as playmate, guardian, or even comfort for your child. And you will play with different children and try to guide them through their life. It is very motivating, it is looking lovely, and uh, I am curious to try and play it, actually. Another tone and a sad piece of news is that this week, 
Liberludorum announced that uh, he will not continue creating annotations for Ex Libris Markborg, the platform listing Markborg titles. Walt had, up until now, uh, put annotations to each Markborg title, but it's not feasible anymore. Uh, the decision was not due to the community. Uh, he goes in much more detail in the official announcement that he made. Uh, it will be linked in the description, so if you want to know more about it, you can see it. Uh, all the uh, annotations that were already there, they won't be lost, but uh, just not new ones will be added. Okay? Check the official uh, announcement and then you can learn more or even how you can perhaps try and uh, help me in and, and support the platform. On gems. Next week, the MS Paint Jam is starting on September 14th and will run for two weeks. This jam has such a good premise because we all know that doing layout might be hard and that art is hard as well. And the idea here is don't think or try too hard. Lean into MS Paint or any equivalent one aesthetics. So have fun, let's just throw some of the industry's standards out of the window and try and create a game completely on paint or whatever is the equivalent of paint on the system that you use, okay? And lean into this as a static. And we are also close to the last week of Lost and Found Jam. Uh, the rule is simple. Use the Lost and Found SRD, it is for creating solo games in which you play as the object itself, like the game uh, Beloved that we mentioned before, but you can submit games to it up until September 21st, and then you can perhaps create a new solo game using this uh, SRD, which seems intriguing. On blogs, because we always have some blogs or threads here, uh, we go with this pro post by Primatic, Prismatic Wasteland that I believe is even more true and needed to the indie scene than the general tabletop RPG scene. Apocalyptical, apolitical RPGs do not exist. Apocalyptical ones exist, apolitical ones don't. And it speaks exactly about what is on the title. It is an important read that might make uh, you reflect on some points that you took for granted uh, and which is already the least that we can expect from a post like that. And in this idea of what are apolitical a games and can any kind of game or in this post specifically role-playing games be apolitical? That's the question that they are answering. And for today, I believe that's it. If you like the video, like them video, share, subscribe, you know how internet works. You can pay me a coffee on coffee. I am so glad that all the support that you were giving me up until now. Let me know in the comments what you are liking about the series, about what you are disliking, uh, about the series, the episode, everything. And you can buy my games on itch.io and I will see you all in my next video. So, see ya!